The Rise and Fall of the British Empire by Patrick Ollett. This is a great course of series about how the British Empire rose to power and how it fell from power. I had to go through this story because both of those questions are really fascinating to me. How did this little island the size of Utah become the first global superpower? How did it last so long and why did it end up losing all of its colonies? One of the reasons I also had to go through this was because earlier I read Babel, which is a fictionalized historical steampunk novel about the British Empire in the Victorian days and it is the nexus of all evil with its imperial imperialism, racism, all sorts of evil things were concentrated in the British Empire for the sake of this story, which was actually pretty good. But it was so one-sided, I thought, what's the real story here? So the real story starts off in England in medieval times, and in the 1300s, they're doing battle with France, and they end up losing this battle with France in the Hundred Years' War. And then they go through a civil war where it's they're fighting against each other. At this point, it's hard to imagine how this little place that's fighting with each other is, is going to end up dominating the globe. But then at the end of the 1400s, you have explorations into the New World and the Spanish colonies expanding throughout the 1500s. In England, you have, this is when there's Henry VII and Henry VIII, and you have stability in government, and uh, you have a consolidation of power, so they're able to do things more effectively from a central level. And this is when privateering and North American investments become profitable. This causes them to build up a greater and greater naval power until they defeat the Spanish Armada in 1588, and then they're now on the global scene. Of course, they're able to set up colonies in North America, and they have various places of trade uh, that start to pop up all over the place after that. I thought it was interesting from these lectures that the colonization is not the main goal uh, of the British Empire at this time. They just we're interested in the trade because that's where the, the profits are coming from. But that ended up being what happened in the case of India. They got more and more involved in, uh, over the decades in governance until the crown became the dominant governing force. So England became strong because it had a strong navy. Uh, it had a strong free market system which led to economic prosperity. It had a early banking, national banking system, uh, early private insurance system, and it pioneered the Industrial Revolution. The downfall of Britain came in the course of the 20th century, when, first of all, going to World War I uh, strained uh, the resources of England, and people nationally started to wonder why they were involved in all these different parts of the world. They were economically weakened by the decision to go into that war, and uh, Ireland split off uh, shortly thereafter, and that was a blow to the national pride that had been uh, going uh, strong through the Victorian era. And then in the middle of the century, you had the blow of World War II, where it was clear that they weren't the dominant player at the table anymore. You had the loss of India, and you have, of course, the Suez Canal crisis, which was the death knell for British influence in the Middle East. I thought it was interesting, though, that in a lot of these instances where England loses its colonies in, in Africa and in India, there's this sense that England knows that it needs to leave at some point. Uh, the long-term plan uh, isn't to stick around forever, but to let people govern themselves eventually and just working out the timing of when to leave. Uh, this is contrary to the French in Vietnam and in Algeria, and the England wanted to learn from their mistakes which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that. Anyway, this was a great, very engaging lecture series. Uh, I loved it all the way through. I thought the presenter was balanced in his pros and cons of how the British Empire interacted with all the different parts of the world. It was very enlightening uh, to a very nuanced history that I don't think gets enough credit uh, both sides of the story. I'm gonna give this four and a half stars.